All right, so what we were just talking about, what we just learned is um, so a security officer has a tremendous amount of, uh, let's say, accoutrements um, on them, creates different issues. The, uh, Damien's overall girth, not only is he just bigger than me flat out, but he is also much bigger than a normal person because of all the hardware. So uh, when we put this on, and again, there's five different ways to do this depending on the instructor you talk to, right? Um, sorry, let's go this way. <laughs> um, we're keeping this very, very simple. This, uh, this technique is right out of the Seat Center Academy. Uh, don't recommend a hoodie, kind of gets in the way. Now, as I was telling you, there's two ways to lay this guy down. You can go inside or outside. My preference is, because I'm right-handed, my preference is, in fact, on the uh, inside, like this. I guess that's what one is, anyway. A um, couple of reasons. Normal holster draw is here. Again, we, here at the DAC, we practice tactile. It's called kinesthetic feel. Um, so we want to know where our hand is in relationship to our body. So we will have a tendency to drive down like this. So the same thing holds for here. I can drive down here. My hand's going to find that regardless. This hand's going to come up underneath that sling. And it's going to start to pick it up and raise it right into my hand, right? So then when we get ready to go for fire on, as we come down, we're going to safety it. We're going to set this down as we're going for our gut. So this is for, you shoot yourself dry, you have to go too rapid into your pistol defenses. If you're gonna be in a congested environment and you're done with this, let's say you've got tall and short uh, alleys and this is gonna be in your way. If you're gonna be using a lot of cover and concealment where you're gonna be bending and standing, that process may look like this. As you come down, you may go overhand, right? And then you can move this clear around to your backside completely out of your way, uh, which later you can just reach back and pull it forward, sorry. I'm clearly not very experienced at this either. No, you're doing good. But what we just found in, so oh, yeah. for, for transparency, this is my sling that I set up on my AR uh, before I started working in security. And so I brought this sling today for this class. And when we went to put this on, completely unaware that I have so many different things on this uniform, so this is an issue. And uh, I guess that would really lend itself to knowing, okay, is this a weapon I'm gonna use in civilian life, or is this a weapon I'm gonna use for work? And the entire reason for coming to this class is because there's an aspect of my employment that I can work on um, the, the, the piers, the docking piers, and on some of the boats, but you have to be proficient in, in this transition. So this obviously was the first pickup. That's big one. I can see what that just did too. Charging hand literally just caught on the baton holster. So these are these are things you really got to think about. Is is and it goes one step further, right? Not only am I going to wear it, you know, at home or in my professional, but then what is my professional garb? And is it different when I stage myself for an AR or not? Yeah. Right. And even though you trim yourself down, if you have lots of little, you know, stringy things like that, can be catching on that. That's just that's a liability. It is a huge liability. So, for the purpose of what we're doing right now, I'm going to take off the vest. Take the vest off. Okay. okay. So that we can work on the fundamentals. But that's a huge uh, red flag to be aware of. And like you're saying, you know, potentially you would have to have a different uniform based on what you're right here. Right. Move stuff down to your belt line. You know, like I said, in, in this particular case. Um, you know, what are you going to do? What are you doing about spare mags, right? Uh, if you have your spare mags, I see your spare mag holder for your Glock on your left, but then you also have to get some sort of a molly, um, you know, what are you going to do about the spares for? Or do you go low uh, pant pockets, right? And you have back to the pants yeah. on. Uh, so there's, there are solutions out there. You just got to figure out what's right for you. And this is the uh, benefit of training because you don't want to have this issue pop itself up when you're out in the field. Could not know. <laughs> so, all right, so let me take this off and then I'll uh, get rid of some of the gear. All right. Man, that's crazy. I never even... We are now with the sling here. Yep. And we're rolling up, right? So... So yeah, so you want to just you want to watch the heel of this thing. When you have a proper amount on your AR platform, this the toe is going to be right into this low part of your clavicle, right? So you want to make sure you're pulling down up to your cheek. You're not holding it down here, like you know, and then putting your face down like that. You'll never get on your optics, and you'll wind up trying to hunt. You want to make sure that this way is 
if it's if it's held such on your sling and it's tight enough in here so that when you grab it and you roll it, that toe's in the right spot, then it just comes right up to your face. Notice my head doesn't move at all. My this thing comes high to my cheek. My eye is right in line with the optics just by rolling it in. So um, if it does tend to fall, since it's a two-point sling, it has a tendency to move a little bit. Um, as you grab it with this hand, as this hand's going down, you can certainly adjust it to that point. So learn what that feels like. If I'm clear down here and I grab this, I'm gonna still pull it up, I'm gonna meet the hands together, so when I roll up, that heel is still in that pocket. Does that make sense? Yep. I wanted to make sure you got out of the way, bro. And now make sure, um, be safety aware, right? So if you put the safety on, when you aim in, make sure you're turning it off when you put it back. That's a good habit to get into, right? Okay, watch that elbow too. You're flagging way, way out here. Not that there's anything horribly wrong with that unless you have to go through a door. So over here? Um, hang on a second. Hold on. So I'm in here, see that? Nice, nice and tight, it keeps it, and then this elbow comes in as well. So I keep a, a fairly narrow. Your elbow is down. Yeah. Okay, so we're more like this. Then. Yeah, you want to pull that hand in, get right up in here, nice and tight. Pull that in tight. Okay. So I shouldn't have any drop in my head. Like Correct. It comes up. It should be right here. All right, and you don't have your rear sights up right now, so that might be throwing you off a bit here. Uh, these are your kind of your classics. Remember how those black right. pools? You know, just yeah. Just <laughs> now, I don't know what you got going on here with your finger, but like I said, when you get a hold of that front end, grab it like you mean it, right? This this is, uh, um, I mean, maybe some kinesthetic aiming, but that is really going to be a lighter grip than if you give all your fingers and pull that into your shoulder. <laughs> Damn, damn. Well, yeah, it helps a lot having that back side up. <laughs> yeah, I'm bad, bad that makes some more sense. So, see, yeah, you're having a little bit of trouble. You know, you're dropping it clear over here instead of keeping it like a cross body. When you do this, when you roll out, it's going to be right where you want it. But each time you put it down, it might get a little further, a little further. And that last time you have trouble because I watched you picking it up right. and planting it into your shoulder. So when you go to set it down, right, if you get a, a lull, you know, make sure you see that. This really, this is not the right adapter for this, by the way. This is uh, uh, this is designed for a ringlet, and uh, so it doesn't quite work 100%. It'll be a little bit different with a real gun. Yeah, this goes on my CZ. It came with the CZ, and yeah. it got the actual rings on the side. Yeah, yeah. and you can get all sorts of mods for that. Um, unfortunately, this was just kind of a, a rough fit to the airsoft. What is the initial stance before the first transition? So if I'm am I if I'm standing guard or on patrol, am I? Am I here? And what am I doing with my hands before I actually go to that? You know, I mean, it really depends on your situation. I mean, obviously, uh, there's a level where you're staged, where if you are, if you're anticipatory, I will literally be like this, right? Um, you know, obviously, you know, applying all the normal rules. But you know, let's talk. Let's be real. Let's be realistic. You know, you're going to be walking around different levels of awareness. If you're not anticipating, you're not expecting anything. You may be a lot more relaxed. Um, you may have to be, I don't know, take your pick, right? Opening a card or drinking a can of, you know, water uh, to which your hands come off, right? And so in that case, it's just gonna be where it's gonna be. And that's why you wanna practice that. Again, one of the reasons we holster draw so high uh, is we can drop it, you can drop it from this position, so your natural um, go-to should be bringing this hand up high and then just driving it down onto that gap. The further down it is, of course, the longer that's gonna take, and then you have to pull it all the way back up. So keep it at a fairly tight and high. Um, I would get into a habit of, before you take your hands off of the fire, make sure it's in the right position. Okay. Right. Again, any good tactical instructor could probably get you way better advice than me because this is not, not real tactical. Oh, you're I'm at absolute zero, so. There you go. Hey, safety. 
This is just myelination drill, right? You're not even shooting. There's no real reason to be taking your safety on and off. But if you myelinate, if you muscle memory, every time it comes down, I want you to turn it on because every time it comes down, you're checking it for the fact that it's on. And later, you'll just push on it and it's already in play, but you won't be thinking about it. It's absolutely ingrained. And if it fights you, that's something to think about, right? Yeah. If, if this, again, it's an airsoft, it's not a quality product. There are modifications you can make to your AR platform. That's a beautiful thing about the AR platform. It is highly you know, modular. And so you can get different safety grips, you can get different, as you see on my real one, I've got an extension on my charging handle. Like I'm having a hard time getting that safety like back up. Which is okay, I'd rather you fight it getting it back up than getting it, you know, taken off, so. Yeah, so what you want to do with the safety is it works a lot better here. So if I'm in, uh, if I'm in here, I, I, as before as I start to drop, I, I rotate, right? Because this doesn't work. But if I do this, I can get a better angle and then my hand will slide off. So as I drop, rotate more. Other way. So you can rotate out here, and then if you want to set it down this way, that's that inside outside, right? Because if you rotate it, let me, let me think about that. So if I, if I want to rotate, because I'm going to set it this way, if I rotate that way, no, it's, I'm right, I'm right. But never do that. So yeah, I set it down like that. So you're just going to rotate here, and when it's upside down, it clicks a whole lot easier. Oh, that makes, okay. Got it? All right, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right. That does make a lot more sense. Yeah, that makes it, okay, that's so much easier. So that's when you're gonna take your hand. Now, in a combat situation, if the gun is jammed, of course, from an instructor's perspective, always put the safety on. In a life-saving situation, you know, if you may not be able to, right? In that case, if you have to just throw that gun down, but this hand does, may not have the time to set that safety in a real scenario. Okay. Always practice it, but you know, be realistic. All right. What is next? 